I'm so nervous, I don't even know how to like introduce this. Okay, not completely ugly today. That's good. I literally am so scared right now. And I'm sweating my ass off. All right, hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you don't remember my name, I don't blame you, but it's Rachel Diane. And if you're new to my channel, what up? My name is still Rachel Diane, and nothing ever changes. Except today's a little bit different. Today I'm not talking about law school, I'm not testing out makeup, I'm actually here to introduce to you guys my own company my own cosmetic company. So I began creating this in 2018. It has taken me three years to create. And there's a reason why it took me three years to create, a multitude of reasons. The first reason is that I formulated this eyeshadow, like this formula is mine. I actually formulated this. I would go into my lab with the chemist, I, have hundreds of papers of notes that I would give back and forth on what needs to be changed, um, what if it's patchy, if it's not pigmented enough, if it's not blending correctly, if it's not foiled enough, if it's only shimmer. I was constantly in the lab, I was constantly taking notes, and I wanted to make sure that whatever I put out there was perfect that it was something that I was genuinely really proud of and proud to give you guys. And the reason why is that this company is all about you. It's all about the people. Um, the reason why I started this company, a lot of people always ask me that, like, why would you start a cosmetic company when you're a lawyer? And first of all, this is a two-fold company that I'll get to in a moment. But the reason why was I have spent a majority of my life absolutely hating myself because I never fit in to society standards. I have been this emo goth kid since I was 11 years old and that has never been in style. It was always the outcast and I've tried to morph myself and for a little bit I try to change myself to fit that societal standard to make people like me and I literally wanted to die inside. And in 2018, I just, I just had enough of it. I just had enough of seeing all the mental traumas it was putting on young women and men. And the more I was looking into makeup and companies, everybody was a carbon copy. Every brand was making the exact same palettes, the exact same trends. All what they were doing was pushing a media agenda. And as we all know, the media tells you how you have to look, how you have to express yourself, how you have to be, instead of realizing that true beauty comes from you. Because nobody else in this world looks like you, or acts like you, or thinks like you, or chooses to express themselves the way you truly want to express yourself. But people don't do that anymore because it's not beautiful. And what is beautiful? It's what celebrities are throwing at you. And then the more and more that celebrities and you know influencers started making brands, I was realizing that they weren't even making product for people. They were making products for themselves, based off of themselves, selling you their image. And you know, get your bag, get your coin, it clearly works. But even if you take like Kylie Cosmetics, for example, it's called Kylie's 21st Birthday Palette, Stormy's Palette, Kendall Jenner's Palette, Kylie's 21st Birthday Palette, and everything is about her. And she is selling her image. Which, you know, is what their whole brand is, is to sell their image. KKW Beauty does it, you know, Huda Beauty does it. Every brand sells themselves. And it's smart. And, you know, I love Huda Beauty. There's so many brands that I love. But when I was looking at brands, I was just like, where, where's the consumer? Where's the mass? Where's the people? In any of these products, because I just feel like I'm buying the fantasy of being you. And I just saw that everybody was looking like an Instagram for you page. Like it was just copy, paste, copy, paste in different fonts. And I noticed like the horrible mental health that people were having. And I truly think that it's because people have lost themselves and they don't really know who they are because they're no longer truly trying to express themselves and be themselves. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. 
even if it doesn't reach a large platform, I'm going to do it because if you've never followed any of my pages, my main things is fuck the system and fuck society. I'm here to tear the patriarchy down. It's my thing. Um, it's the hill I choose to die on. That's fine. So I do want to be transparent with the second part of this company. As most of you know, I am a criminal defense and civil rights attorney in Los Angeles. So all a uh, portion of all proceeds will be going towards free legal work for minority children living in the inner cities. So it is for free legal work for children that are uh, being attacked and oppressed by a very racist legal system whose family cannot afford to buy an attorney. So it will be an alternative to getting a public defender. I understand that there's going to be some people out there that do not like that and do not want to buy from my brand because they don't want a portion of their money going to that and that is totally fine. That is your right, but again, this is one of the hills that I choose to stand and die on. Um, eventually, as the company continues to grow and the more money that the cosmetic company brings in, I want to be able to make those proceeds be big enough to create my own legal nonprofit for children and for domestic violence victims. So I just had to throw that out there. Now, I will get in and I think a lot of people are going to be insanely shocked at what my first launch is and my first palette is because everybody was expecting this goth dream because clearly that's me and everyone's like oh my god I can't wait to buy the gothic fantasy and I was like laughing inside and super excited to like reveal this because it's not gothic at all. It's very creative, so you can do gothic looks and out there looks, but it's not gothic. Because again, this company's not about me. I'm not making my image to sell to you. I'm being inspired by you. So that leads me into telling you what inspired this first palette, and then I will show it to you. As you can tell from my background, my favorite art is street art. It has always been my favorite art. I think it is magnificent. I think it tells a story. I think it tells about a culture and a history and it says like what people are feeling in that moment. It gives you insight to exactly how the people move there, how they believe there, how they speak there, what they have been through. Every time I've ever visited any city, I have always gone and tried to find the most amazing street art. I always ask people walking around, hey, if there's one spot in your entire city for me to go check out for street art, where would it be? And I love learning about the history of that city, like, and of those neighborhoods through the street art. And I love seeing the pride people have for their neighborhoods and the pride people have from where the neighborhood started and where the neighborhood's at now and all of the steps in between. And I live in Long Beach and it is one of the most incredible cities and one of, well, it's not really a city, but it's one of the most incredible neighborhoods to ever live in and ever be in because people that live in this neighborhood have so so much pride for Long Beach. They are die hard Long Beach till the day they die, repping the hats. If you walk out in Long Beach on every block in every neighborhood, there is street art everywhere and it is telling you what they care about and their, their passion and their history. There's murals of Breonna Taylor, there's murals of Nipsey Hussle, of Tupac, there's murals of what's happening to the children at the border. You know, there's murals of so many incredible things and you could just feel the neighborhood through it. So, I bring to you a palette that was inspired by people's neighborhood pride. So here is the outside packaging. That's just my logo. It says Royalty Cosmetics and I will get into that name in a moment. And if that logo looks familiar, it's because it's my neck tattoo. I will get into that in a moment too. But I first want to show you Queen of the Hood. 
So this was inspired by neighborhoods. It was inspired by the history of neighborhoods. It was inspired by the street art and how they choose to express themselves in their unique way to the culture of their area. And so that is when I created this baby. And it has taken three years to create this and formulate every single shadow in here. Before I get into the shadows, I just want to quickly go over the logo and the name. And I know this is all over the place, but I have so much anxiety that and ADHD that my brain is jumping everywhere. But this is the outside packaging, and it says Royalty Cosmetics. And again, the logo is my neck tattoo. And I'll tell you why I got my neck tattoo and how this played into the company. I got the neck tattoo because I felt like I was always counted out. Like always. Ever since I was a kid, I was always counted out. And I was always like discarded and deemed not important or not valuable and I won't make it anywhere in life. And I felt inherently dead because that's how the public perceived me. So the skull represents death. And when you think of something that is dead, you know, over time you forget about it. It has no power anymore because it's no longer here. So then I threw a crown on top of it because the crown represents royalty. It represents power. It represents respect. It demands your attention and it demands to prosper. So I put the crown on top of the skull to represent me, essentially, on how I felt, that I didn't care if I was discarded, if all of these people said these horrific things about me, if they tried to make it seem like I wasn't going to go anywhere in life, I was going to take my power back. Because again, fuck the man, and fuck people, and fuck society. So that is what Royalty Cosmetics represents. It represents you guys. It represents the horrible notion of society of trying to say that the only people that matter in this world are celebrities. Your follower count matters. How many likes you get matters. Your comment section matters. Um, how notarized you are on social media if you're a celebrity, if you're an influencer, if you're one of the rich. And that's the only way that this society is giving people power but they fail to realize that the power is the masses. It is the people. We have more power than we will ever, ever realize. I mean, look what happened with the Derek Chauvin trial. We only got a guilty verdict because of the people, because of the power the people have with those marches and those protests. And I wanted you guys, every time you open up something that I make, to feel powerful, to just be reminded for a moment that society has nothing on you. That societal standards don't mean shit because you are the power. So that was such a long intro. So let's get into the inside of the palette and I will explain the palette to you. Um, I do want to say that I have no idea how to do studio lighting. So I'm also going to be inserting pictures of what the shades really look like because these lights wash them out. I am so excited. So, again, I'm going to insert the pictures because these lights wash them out. But I'm going to go through each of the names, swatch them, and explain why I gave each one their name. So, every single uh, color in this palette is named after something very specific to a neighborhood and to a city. Again, this was inspired by neighborhoods and the pride people have in neighborhoods. So I will go through each and every one. I will swatch them and it will be delightful. That's a fucking lame ass word to use delightful. Okay, so here is the first row and the first one, this shade right here is called Coney Island, which is obviously a neighborhood in like Park in Brooklyn. This brown shade right here is called Sixth Street after Austin, Texas. Big place for drinking and hanging out, especially in that college area. This black shade right here is called Corwin House. And Corwin House is actually the judge's house 
uh, in the Salem Witch Trial. So it is in Salem, and you can tour it, and that is where the judge lived that condemned all of those witches. Uh, this shade right here, it's a sh it's like a rose gold champagne color. It is called LA, E-L-L-A-Y. If you are from Los Angeles or you've lived in Los Angeles for a really long time, you'll notice that people don't say LA, they say LA. And then this shade right here is called Copper Canyon. So I lived in this city called Lake Havasu, well this town, this small little neighborhood called Lake Havasu City. Uh, for about five years and there's this insanely popular spot on the lake called Copper Canyon. Now my sister said that this is not copper and I said that copper is like a goldish color and she says it's red. I refuse to believe her. I believe that this is copper therefore it's called Copper Canyon um, but again it's a place on the lake that all the locals would go to to like jump off rocks and go cliff diving and stuff. This yellow shade right here is called Mill Avenue. I went to Arizona State University for undergrad. Mill Avenue is a very busy, very popular street where all of the college kids go to drink. This shade right here is called Tiger Stadium after the stadium in Detroit. So here is the first row, and then we will move on to the second row. Okay, so here is the second row. So we have here this foil, which is called Gucci Row. So I also have lived in Vegas. My dad still lives in Vegas. So whenever I'm going home, even though I live in Los Angeles, I'm going home to Vegas. Gucci Row obviously is like a phrase and coined use uh, by Las Vegas locals a lot to say like they're at the running Rebels games um, especially since it's like they're courtside sitting Gucci Rose at the Rebel games and then this color right here is called Golden Gate obviously after San Francisco this color right here is called Sunset Vice for Miami it was Miami Heat's original like name in 1988 uh, this is called Mardi Gras, obviously after New Orleans. This uh, shimmer, this is not a foil, it's a shimmer, is called Smith's Union. It is actually one of the very first bars ever in Honolulu, Hawaii. This color right here is my sister's absolute favorite. It is this mint green color and it is called Wall Street, obviously in New York. Wall Street, and it looked like money, so it made sense to me. This shade right here is called Crenshaw. Obviously, very famous neighborhood, very famous street in Los Angeles, and it reminded me of a Nipsey blue Crenshaw color, so I wanted to give ode to Nipsey here. So now that I've swatched all of the shades, I do have to let you guys know that in order to get a lot of these colors this pigmented, I had to make them pressed pigments. So some of these are pressed pigments over eyeshadows. What you need to know about working with pressed pigments are two things. The first thing is that it is always best to use a eye primer. So I use an actual eye primer like P. Louise. My sister uses concealer. Um, she prefers to work with concealer instead of an eye primer and it works just as fine but you need that wet sticky base it's what works best with pigments and then well, I guess three things the second thing is that when working with a pigment how it's gonna work best is to dip in and then press it on to where you want it pack it on and then blend out the top you can just go in and just start blending, that's fine, it still works, but it's gonna take like two or three dips in to get it this pigmented, where if you just take it and pack it, you'll automatically have that pigment that you're looking for. The third thing is to get something this pigmented, there is going to be kickback in the pan. Um, that has never bothered me, just because I've learned through like these past three years that when there's kickback, it just means there's a lot of pigment within the shadows. 
Uh, what I do with kickback is that anytime there's kickback, when I go to dip back in, instead of like dipping back into the pan, I just lightly uh, press my uh, pad, pen, brush. I lightly pat, uh, I hate speaking. I lightly uh, tap my brush back into the, the kickback. So instead of just going into the pan, I just do this onto the powder that has kicked up in the pan and I use that. So that's how I kind of work with kickback. Um, you could do whatever you want to do with kickback. So I did want to let you guys know those three things about working with pigments. Um, you could literally tell that I'm sweating my dick off. That is so gross. Whatever. Um, you will also see in this video, because this is such a creative palette, like this is literally for you to create and mix and master and pretend like it's actual paint, you'll see that I mix the colors a lot and that is how I intended them to be. So this black is a pigmented black, but it's one of those blacks that if you want it super black, you're gonna have to build it up. And the reason why I didn't make this one overly pigmented is because I use it to mix with a lot of other shades. So if I don't want this pink as pigmented, maybe I'll, I'll mix it in with the black just a tad bit to make a deeper pink. You know, I mix it with this brown a lot to go from a medium brown to a dark brown, as you saw within this video. I also use my transition shade as a mixer as well. As you saw, this is a neon orange, but I wanted a burnt orange in my crease. And I mixed it, the, the neon orange, with this color right here to get more of that burnt orange. So you can do that as well to change the shadows. That is why I have created it like this. So, and then also, as you will see in the video, I mixed um, the pink, the orange, and this color together to get my blush color. And I also used the black and the pink to get my lip color. And I have been doing that for a while now with this palette. So I think this is officially the longest introduction in the world. I couldn't stay on topic to save my life, and I'm really sorry for that. But it is launching this Saturday, which is the 29th, I believe. Let me check. It is not the 29th. It is launching this Saturday, the 26th, uh, and it will be on my website that I will put here. I will put down a link in the bio of this YouTube as well. It is MyRoyaltyCosmetics.com. It is priced at $40. Uh, the nice thing about it is that there is no taxes unless you live in the state of California. Now, it won't always be like that, but because I'm a lawyer and I know all the rules of the world, uh, until, I'm not gonna bore you with that. Eventually, as the company grows, there will be taxes on my products in all 50 states, but as of right now, by the law, I only have to put uh, sales tax on the product in California. So if you don't live in California, there won't be any sales tax. It is $40. I hope you absolutely love it. I hope that you, I hope that you're inspired. I hope you're inspired to be yourself. I hope you're inspired to take your power back and not tell, and not have society tell you how to look. I hope that for the first time, you open something and think, wow, a brand actually thought about me. I hope it makes you feel good. And I know so many people are shocked by this because I don't do bright colors. I don't. It is not something that I play with on my eyes very often or ever. But again, this is not about me at all. Before I die, I will take down a racist, classist legal system and I will take down a society standard patriarchal system and make women and men feel beautiful and feel empowered by being themselves and feel royal. So, if you wanna see how I got this eye look and this lip and this blush, then just keep watching because I will be doing a tutorial, obviously, using this palette. I will have a lot more tutorials to come using this palette. If you look on my Instagram, I've actually used this palette for a majority of the pictures I have taken for the past three years. Um, I also have a new launch coming out in October as well. 
So stay tuned for that one. It's coming out around October 13th, so you could just assume what it's going to kind of be like. Also, I do want to ask you guys to please give me feedback. Even, even if it's bad, even if you're like, you know what, Rachel, it was really hard to work with this shade. Maybe you knew how to work it, but me as a consumer didn't know how to work this shade. Let me know, because the only way I'm going to keep improving on products is by you guys giving me feedback. You know, I know how to work a lot of things. I formulated this, but if the consumer doesn't know how to work it, or if the consumer doesn't like it, then let me know so I can perfect it for next time. So don't worry about kissing my ass. Just give me your honest feedback and just also know that I love you and you're beautiful and you're amazing and you're kind and you're intelligent and you're badass as fuck. And now that this video is gonna be 45 minutes long, keep watching if you wanna see how I get this. So I'm starting with the P. Louise Eye Primer Base, and I'm going to be putting that all over my eye and then patting it in with my Beauty Blender. Like I said, pigments work best when it has a sticky base to work with, so concealer or eye primer. Now I'm going to be taking Coney Island and Tiger Stadium. I'm going to be mixing those two together on a fluffy brush and start putting this throughout my crease. I'm going for a super grunge look, so I'm bringing this all the way up to my eyebrow, as well as really blending it outwards towards my temple. And I'm sorry if you just heard my TV in the background. <laughs> my bad. But I'm also going to be putting this under my eye very messily. This look does not have to be clean. Again, it's grunge, so the messier, the better it's going to come out. So really blow that out under the eye. Now with a black eye pencil, I'm going to tight line my waterline and then extend a little line outwards to make my eye look a little bit longer and then smudge this black all on the bottom of my eye. And again, this is a grunge look, so the messier, the better with this black. Now I'm going to be picking up Corwin House, which is the black in the palette, and I am going to be just smudging that all over the black that I had put on from inner corner all the way to outer corner, and I'm also going to be dragging this down as well. I want my under eyes to appear extremely dark, so just bring the black pretty far down. Now mixing Sixth Street and Corwin House together, I'm going to take like a flat packing brush and slash smudging brush and I'm going to start dragging down that black even further as well as blending that black out to really give a super grunge look and I pretty much drag this down to where my socket kind of ends and I'm also extending it outwards to create a line from that extended eye that I created with the liner. Picking up my crease brush, I'm not putting any extra product on it. I'm just going to use it to do circular motions on the lower half of my eye in order to start blending that out so it's not so harsh. And this is what you should kind of have, this very blown out grunge look. Now picking up Sunset Vice on a flat packing brush, I'm going to pack that onto the upper inner corner and I'm going to kind of bring it up following my crease bone of my eye and I'm going to pack that on my inner tear duct as well as the quarter innerness of my lower lash line. I don't know how I don't know how to explain anything in this world. In order to blend this out, I just kind of started flicking upwards into my brow and into the crease, just lightly flicking up. I'm going to now start packing it on the outer V of my eye, following straight along that black line that I made, just continuously packing out in that more straight area. I'm also bringing it up onto the bone as well. I'm not just keeping it on the outer corner. And now I'm beginning to extend it outwards towards my temples, again with that flicking motion. I also started wrapping it around my eyebrow too, like the tail end of my eyebrow, and I'm doing very little product to build it up to make sure that I don't mess up because it's so pigmented. And I was using my fingers to kind of blend out the edges with the heat of my hands. Now I'm going to be picking up the lay with my finger because that's how I like to use foils the best. And I'm just going to be popping that into the center of my lid between the two pink shades. And I am not bringing this up onto my brow bone because I want you to see that burnt orange. I'm just popping it straight onto the center of the eye. Back with my packing brush, I'm just going to kind of shimmy like back and forth the uh, color so it blends a little bit better. 
Now I'm gonna grab Sunset Vice as well as Tiger Stadium and I'm gonna put a little bit of Coney Island in there as well. I'm gonna take it on a really big fluffy eye brush and I'm going to go in circular motions on everywhere where I wanna put my blush, which is my cheekbones and usually my nose as well. And then I will take a clean blush brush and I will use this to really blend it out and diffuse it so it's not so pigmented. But I love doing this to match my eyeshadow. I'm also going to take a fluffy brush with a little bit more sunset vice because now that I like this shape, I'm just going to start using it to blend out and build out the product on my temples and upper brow bone area. So I took an Urban Decay like glitter liner and I just started patting that all under my eye and bringing it down to my cheek as well, almost like in a crying emotion. This is obviously not in my palette. This is Urban Decay. Now with a liquid liner, I'm using the NYX one, I'm just going to kind of haphazardly draw a squiggly line down from the center of my eye to right above where my lip starts in order to kind of like mimic a black tear because, you know, this look just wasn't enough. <laughs> So I also want to show you kind of how I do lips with it as well. So I already lined my lips with black liner and I shouldn't have put the shadow on right away. I should have blended out the black lip liner with a brush first because the black shadow sets the lip liner. So unfortunately it set it a little bit funny, but usually I'll line my lips with um, any lip liner that I want to use. I'll blend it out with a brush and then I will go in with the matching shade. So obviously here I'm going in with the black and I'm using my black to blend out and smudge out that lip liner. Then I'm going to slap on Sunset Vice into the center of the top and the bottom and I'm going to use a brush as well to kind of blend those together before I put the gloss on but it kind of looks cool. I do this with the brown and the nude a lot. And then I slapped on a nude gloss to get my lip look. And I really like doing this to match my eyeshadows as well, to have symbiosis. All right, you guys, so there you have it. I know this was the longest reveal video in the history of reveal videos. I just had a lot to pack in into one video, so I hope that you guys actually watched and bared with me. I hope that you love it. I hope that you love the brand I've made. I hope that you love the product that I have made. I hope, also, there's a mirror in here. I don't know if I said that. Uh, I hope that you guys love the dual part of the company as well, the legal side, the social justice aspect of this company as well. I have put my blood, sweat, and tears into both of these ideas and into these companies and now building a nonprofit. So I know if you're watching this, you may not know, but every comment that has ever been left to me on any social platform, any DM, I read them and I respond to you and if you ever talk to me on social media you know that that's true because I always get oh my god I can't believe you responded. I respond to all of you because I love you and you guys have changed my life so much. I may have created this company in 2018 on my own initiative and my own prerogative but I was in an insanely, insanely dark place a year ago, back in March of 2020. And I really just didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to do law. I didn't want to do this company. I didn't want to breathe anymore. And out of nowhere, all of you guys came. All of my babies came out of nowhere. And it gave me the motivation and the inspiration to keep going. And I will never be able to thank you enough for that. So I hope when you buy this, if you're able to buy this or want to buy this, I hope that you realize that every time you open that up, it was generally made with love because you saved my life. And there's nothing I could ever do to repay any of you for that. And I think you're all so beautiful and you're so smart 
and you're so ambitious and I hope that this inspires you to be you again. Or maybe find yourself and express yourself. I did not expect to cry. I really love you all so much. And I look forward to seeing you and seeing the looks that you guys create and watching you grow. All right. Now that I'm crying off everything I just did, I'm going to go.